This is All India Radio. Tonight we bring an interview with Medha Patkar, Member World Commission on Dams. Medha Patkar is interviewed by Sharita Rai, a journalist. Medha Patkar, welcome to the All India Radio Studios in Bangalore. Well, you're too well known to merit a fresh introduction. And most people are aware of your tremendous contribution to the success of the Narmada Bachar movement in Gujarat. And of course, the way you have brought world focus to the socio-economic problems associated with the construction of big dams across our major rivers. As a result of your 14-year-long agitation, begun in the mid-80s, you have successfully managed to turn a powerful institution like the World Bank around to your point of view and to review the issue of funding from a perspective that is people-centered. Your position today as a member of the World Commission of Dams is certainly in recognition of your sustained effort in this direction. But looking back, what do you see as your chief contribution to the Narmajabacha movement and what is its current status? You see, today the um, Narmada Bachao movement, the Save Narmada movement, has achieved uh, something in terms of uh, not just compelling the World Bank to withdraw its funding, but certainly compelling them to review their policies in the water and hydropower sector to an extent. And uh, that is what has compelled them to uh, sit with us across the table in this World Commission on Dams. Uh, it has also been successful in stopping four of the 30 major dams in the Narmada River Valley. And all this is not my personal uh, effort alone, but it is rather the people's struggle which has gone through and beyond the repression by the various state governments uh, because the Narmada flows through the Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. And the farmers and the tribal communities therein have been fighting this battle or rather the war against the gigantic forces. Today the Sardar Sarovar Dam, the only one that is that was being built in Gujarat, is uh, stopped as far as its main work in the riverbed is concerned through the Supreme Court stay order since 1995 because the social, environmental, economic and also the planning related issues are raised. We have raised the question as to whether such kind of centralized water management projects yes. uh, would ever solve the water crisis which uh, those have not and whether the kind of agricultural pattern um, that follows the big dams would really uh, lead us into the farmer's plight such as the present one with the hybrid pesticide fertilizer based uh, uh, leading even to suicides and whether or not the options in terms of the decentralized water management that would really set the priorities in terms of water utilization right would not be less costly, short term, people oriented and without causing large scale displacement, destruction and even disparity. In that sense, do you see that you have set a model for uh, popular people's movements in this country? After all, you have taken on a, a powerful uh, institution like the state and successfully at that. Oh, you see, not just me, but uh, hundreds of activists uh, from the villagers, the Dalit tribal communities and those who have come from the cities and joined this movement, as well as our supporters, all of us believe that uh, there is nothing like a model for a people's movement. It's a social movement that really evolves around the issues of the people with their initiative and the strategization no doubt is important and especially when it is a multiple front strategy taking up the issues from village to the world bank but it has to be based on our own perspectives violent or non-violent uh, perspective of uh, bringing in change people's empowerment perspective perspective in terms of uh, linking the national issues uh, and raising those at the international forai and also our own strengths, resources and even weaknesses. And we know that uh, here in India, for example, when today not just the big dams, but the development projects, which are known to be destructive 
and are established to be not public purpose projects causing large scale displacement and not being able to take care of rehabilitation with alternative source of livelihood not taking care of the environmental impact and ass assessment leave aside management or mitigation and not really achieving even the economic objectives of employment to management of natural resources all such development projects are questioned they are questioned also because the people are never heard and involved in spite of the panchayati raj and so called constitutional amendments mm -hmm. so when these projects are questioned people stick to their land water forest claim the right to those resources and also right to decide what is development and participate in planning and execution of it at every level possible not just in the tribal communities with the self rule act that has come up during last two years but also in all village panchayats and urban communities and when this is done people are evolving their own strategies but certainly the people's movements like the narmada bachao andolan or chatisgarh mukti morcha or the save ganga um ganga mukti andolan or even various organizations in karnataka whether in the uttar kannada or dakshin kannada district for that matter always set examples and uh, through their own strategies that are conveyed and exchanged with the various movements which also form alliance they support each other and this is exactly what narmada bachao andolan has done we have gone beyond the save narmada issue yes. to the national alliance of people's movements which now is raising issues of dalits women minorities tribals farmers and the uh, you know the development planning priorities to the uh, globalization liberalizations uh, negative impacts and so here Uh, you know something that evolves is really the people's movements and people's politics but what kind of leadership do you see uh, that such a, a movement requires uh, uh, let me also ask you a related question in that context you know what importance would you give to the gandhian tactic of fasting as an effective tool of uh, protest because you yourself i think uh, in contemporary times you are one of the few people who have uh, used it very effectively you went on i think uh, fast uh, several times in the 5 years between 90 and 95 as a I long said, prolonged fast yes as i said the strategies and the programmatic strategy will always differ and has to differ and it has to be region specific issue specific uh, group and the community specific but um, there are certain uh, commonalities you know and as far as the uh, gandhi ji's contribution to the whole uh, arena of people's movements is concerned it is that of uh, truth and non violence basically and that is exactly what the movements such as ours is been following and following uh, with its own effectiveness we know that we cannot fight arms and the violent state that represses that kills people that uh, puts uh, people in jail with false cases with a similar kind of tactics but through non violence which doesn't require atom bombs and hydrogen bombs and doesn't need to consider oneself as insecure we are the confident lot of people and those sections of population who uh, feel you know bravery and courage when they really put their whole lives at stake and these are the issues of life and death really so when we fast also it is not fast for the sake of fast that comes as a last resort with the maximum moral strength and with mass support uh, so it is not merely an individual decision when a fast kind of program is taken up by a mass based people's organization such as ours and that is what we saw throughout the narmada movement period we took it to that program only when in a particular phase of a movement we were betrayed and betrayed beyond limits by the various state governments when they promised us a review of the sardar sarovar project not once but thrice when we were raising that issue through the institutionalized means and ways and through dialogue not just coming on the street but also contesting their facts figures arguments propositions and perspectives they always promised that but they never really went into it and so we had to take it up to question our own strength 
to kind of charge our own batteries and to test ourselves but also to put the truthful moral pressure on the decision makers which we feel is always reasonable when you have a definite goal reflected into demands and you have a perspective and a priority for that phase of the moment and when this was done whenever we were fasting whether in bombay or bhopal it was uh, you know a result of a long term mobilization going from hamlet to hamlet in the tribal areas holding meetings after meetings and discussions with the village representatives that came from the villages the tehsils a very democratic decision making process long kind of strategization process and so on and uh, it was never without or cutting off the dialogue with the government fully but certainly the non cooperation kind of strategy which again is the gandhi ji's uh, contribution was very helpful to us and we could stick to it with people not uh, falling prey to the bribing or repressive strategies of the state only because we believed in truth and we had complete analysis of the reports their facts and figures and arguments to challenge and this came from our relation uh, ship with the people as activists and people's relationships across the sections uh, you know the classes and the caste communities within the narmada kind of valley so uh, it is a mixed strategy that gandhi ji has given to us and uh, given us the basic framework and the principles which movements like us uh, follow but we also have to uh, you know learn from marx and jay prakash ji's movements and lohia and very many efforts across the world and also relate it and apply it to the present situation and evolve something that is the most appropriate in, in that context is it possible to make a success of an apolitical movement such as yours has been all we are not a political at all we are political but we are not in electoral politics and that is a, a very important thing in the present context where politics is corrupt not just uh, involved in corruption uh, that is monetary but also misusing the resources both human and natural and where the decisions are being taken on irrational basis such as the power play and the competition and the monetary gains both we see the regionalization of politics the alliance amongst the various mainstream political parties today but uh, not really leading to and people oriented uh, rational uh, politics of values and ideology they join each other and uh, shake hands beyond ideological frameworks without considering what they really believe in and so these kinds of movements really believe that electoral politics will remain in its place but in order to even question the electoral politics the valuelessness and the corruption that is rampant in the electoral politics arena we must have the strong people's politics that would be parallel to it but not remain aloof or consider electoral politics as untouchable it would question them confront them it would have dialogue with them we have been talking to the mlas and mps on all issues and briefing them and compelling them to raise issues at the fore i to whatever extent possible but they themselves say many a times raising their hands that they are helpless within their own parties where they have to follow dictum they cannot raise the issues which the individual politicians also may be believing in or may be supporting us when in opposition so when they are in power they take one position and when they are in opposition they generally support uh, wherever there is a mass based struggle so these kinds of politics must be questioned we must have our own ideology and As, have the people's politics yes if i may interrupt uh, ideologically how do you see or how would you describe your own politics ideologically you speaking. see the national alliance of people's movements and the narmada bachao andolan the national fish workers federation the samajwadi jan parishad the sarva seva sangh the sarvoday to marxist range of activists and organization that are in the alliance all sincerely believe that our value framework is of equality self reliance and simple living we must have just and sustainable ways of using resources 
we must give a share and a due place to all communities with equality and justice as the basic values guiding us but we also must have the environmental considerations when you are facing the impacts which are highly destructive with the present consumerist lifestyle and this is what capitalism to communism all kinds of ideologies across the world have really neglected and ignored but today the world has to take cognizance not just of the issues of biodiversity and climate change but issues of the rights and privileges of the communities which are living on natural resources for whom it is not just the matter of environmentalism but the life and livelihood and so this is our politics that really is uh, green and red both and uh, all the organizations that are in it are really raising these issues of sustainability and justice towards a new world order we have to change india but we are also to change the world and today in the context of globalization liberalization where the world bank imf and the world trade organization is really allowing a handful of so called developed countries exploit our resources unjustly through a kind of neo colonial processes we must question those bodies which are there through decades and build our own non violent uh, people oriented development perspective and that is the challenge before us i'm sure this is a question most people would want to ask you have you any plans of joining active politics as i said we are in politics people's politics alternative col- politics non electoral non party politics uh, and we are active in it as everyone but can see but is it possible to keep the two separate electoral politics and we have and... Uh, no plans to join electoral politics what can you do after all going there when your issues are not considered as uh, favorable to a party that is for gaining or retaining its power what do you achieve by raising a question in the parliament or assembly which becomes non starred or gets a false answer you better raise it on every single people's forum and that strength also compels them and will compel them more and more if only we are united at the national and international level and we have people to people and people's organizations alliance effective one but you don't see for yourself a role like the greens parties have in in europe uh, not now national alliance uh, has no plans to join electoral politics, politics at this stage of time and finally where have you derived the moral and physical stamina to sustain your movement for over 14 years without as you described the money and muscle power that is uh, uh, prevalent in modern day indian politics you see hundreds of such activists are really working and working uh, through decades and generations in this country so there is nothing new and great and unique that i am doing uh, but uh, i suppose looking back uh, it comes from my family which has given me a lot uh, a uh, family of a trade unionist father yes. and a uh, mother who is also involved in the women's uh, organizations um, only today and who have been uh, freedom fighters uh, throughout uh, i could see that uh, there is a role to be played uh, beyond the personal career and pursuits and uh, you gain a lot out of it satisfaction for yourself not that you only lose and you only sacrifice you gain the people's love and support and uh, a kind of uh, moral strength and confidence to live like a human being without uh, getting involved or getting as less involved as possible in the destruction and exploitation that is going on around you uh, but it also comes from the people such as the tribals in the narmada valley or the coastal fish workers population here in karnataka who are struggling the uh, battles uh, and who can really take the moments and the struggles of survival to its peak without even having the buffer to fight so these issues are fought in the fields and uh, in the hamlets in the river valleys and on the farmlands and in the estuaries and on the coastal lands and that is uh, really important and that keeps you going you can have your battery charged just with a struggle strong or a dancing um, on a holy day with the tribal but you also see the results coming up and uh, that is uh, uh, you know a result of the effective strategization a strong mobilization and perseverance which of course women have um, always more than the men do well thank you very much for uh, spending time with us 
Welcome. Thank you. That was an interview with Meda Patka, member of World Commission on Dams. Meda Patka was interviewed by Sharita Rai, a journalist. This broadcast came to you from the studios of All India Radio, Bangalore.